clickbait explanation, quickly rambled list of things that you'll see later in the video because it's time for another insert name of video. Wait, I think I, I don't think I was supposed to read it that way, but whatever. Hey, folks, it's a Starbase summary. <laughs> gonna be looking at some of the things happening around Starbase. Remember, you might have the option to watch this in a couple different languages. Click the little settings gear wherever it is on your screen and go to change the audio track. You can even listen to just ambient audio if you are done listening to me. But kicking it off over here, we see some cables running down Tower 1s. Looks like there's going to be some movable service platforms going up and down, you know, like sort of window washing things, but we've seen them run these cables up and down because they must be planning on working at various heights along the tower, potentially with the uh, skate rails in there. If we come around to the other side, we've got some more cables behind the tower. It's a very rapid pan, tilt, zoom. I mean, it's doing everything at once, honestly, <laughs> in that clip from Gage there. Right across the street from Pad 1, we've got uh, pile drilling happening. Look at the little excavator arm there. Clearing the... Should I go with sand mud? I bet you that smells. <laughs> Drug that close from the beach. But uh, they've been continuing to work on this air separation plant. It's right near the turning circle across the street slash Highway 4 from Launch Pad 1. Looking into the door, we can see ship 34, or ship 43 is actually, common dome section there. I don't know if we're going to punch in on that label. Nope. It had a label on it. Somewhere there might be like a member's photo of exactly what that label said. Now, we've seen this thing in the uh, factory a couple of times here, and here we see it moving around with some transfer tubes on it. That jig where they work on those uh, transfer tubes, downcomers, whatever you want to call it. And that is scooting over into the bay. So not only is it a fixture where they work on assembling those things, it's actually a, can transport them as well. Over checking in on the Gigabay construction, looks like we are putting the fourth boom on those corner tower cranes there at the Gigabay. And then here's this wacky thing. What in the heck is IB proofing? We zoom in on the label on that thing. We actually caught quite a few uh, different shots of this, but the label, I, I think we might see it in the video here, says ibuprofen, play on headache medicine, like ibuprofen, maybe people overseas don't get it because it's called something wacky, uh, but ibuprofen is a, is a type of I guess, headache medicine, painkiller sort of thing here. And that says ibuprofen, SpaceX development test. So I wonder what they will be proof and well we've seen things like this around Starbase before although not necessarily as well put together as this uh, potentially for tests loading out those hold down clamps or hold up clamps whatever you want to call them on the new pad but they had to change the way that it works because there's no flat plate underneath anymore we'll see we know that it rolled over there next to pad 2 here where they're doing some retract tests Looking over into the Star Factory, we've got Ship 40's nose cone moving along. Got that nice little piece of paper label there on it with the red tape. Actually, some parts that look like they're just there for temporary stiffening. Those don't stay uh, for the rest of the life of the ship. I guess that's a good way you could say that, right? But maybe just to hold things in position while moving it around or keep them stable. Maybe a jig to align something or something along those lines. It's so interesting that they're putting the tiles on the incomplete sections, right? It's not like, all right, well, we make an entire ship, and then we come back and we put the tiles on it, and then we come back and we do this other thing. Uh, they're sort of building it in, I guess, a parallel process, you could say. In any event, it makes a little bit of sense to me, but uh, there is, I'll look at it, is this a big Mars, I think, in the building. you got some engines, and I think there's seats there as well in the lower left, in the Mars, yeah, yeah there you go, thank you, Raptors are play, display. And then the Mars sort of hanging there in the, uh, the entryway, I guess is the way you could say it. Whatever. Still working on the apartment building, the big uh, concrete monolithic structure. It's not monolithic. It came in in pieces, but it's a big structure is what I meant. I didn't mean it was one single piece. I think that's what monolith means. Anyways, big structure, apartment building, crew, crew housing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Going over to Pad 2, we've got some LOX pump testing. We've seen more and more testing happening. They're sort of fi finishing off the uh, the big construction phase where they're moving big pieces around, putting on plates and that sort of stuff, and they're getting down to uh, not the nitty-gritty. You would hope there would be no nits or grit in the uh, LOX pumps, but in... Sorry. <laughs> Look, you just don't want FOD in your, in your LOX pumps. Maybe what they're doing is trying to blow all that out. 
But we've seen quite a bit of uh, testing here as Pad 2's major construction sort of finishes off and they get into all the little fiddly detailed works that are required to make this pad, uh, or to help, to allow, whatever, this pad support a launch. It's like we've got uh, in advance of Veterans Day up here. They've installed the American flag on Tower 1. It's actually a really cool shot, Caesar, the nighttime shot. Can you imagine how difficult that is to capture at night with no, like, spotlights directly on that flag? Caesar knocking it out of the park as usual. This is the top of Pad 1. We've been seeing them cut up that old LM for uh, quite some time now, and they are just showering sparks everywhere because that thing is not down yet. Saving no, uh, saving no parts of it, just getting it all out of there, out of the way. Running up the road to Massey's real quick. There's that ship static fire stand. You can actually see the quick disconnect up there on top of the static fire stand. You can tell it's, it's a static fire and transport stand, I think, because it's got those little uh, side legs, and we might see that move around some. I wonder. In any event, test tanks, don't think we've seen much from them. There's some scaffolding and a sunshade and maybe like a wind screen. I wonder what work they're doing there. Some work on the cryo station as well. Looks like it's being upgraded to support the V3 ships. Remember, some of the exact uh, positions and stuff get moved around, so they have to make those changes so that the new ship designs fit the uh, structure jigs, mount points, etc., etc. Moving some parts around in Mega Bay 2. There's sorry, the door come down at the end. This actually looks like we've cropped in a little bit because it's a little low resolution, but uh, air quotes test tank text 18 sneaking into Mega Bay 2. Here's the big uh, alien head booster cutie coming off of pad one. That would make a heck of a coffee table. Honestly, I'm sure they'll just, well, maybe not. Look how, <laughs> look how big the thing is compared to the guy. I don't think that would be a good coffee table. That would be a very poor coffee table because you couldn't reach your, if you put a drink on it. I don't even know if I need to talk about cyber trucks. There's still lots of cyber trucks there. There's an awful lot of cyber trucks. Across the road. <sighs> Good grief. Gigabay construction continues on. You can see the uh, columns, pillars, slowly rising up. Actually, there's not really much slow about it. But we haven't seen a lot of cross beams yet. Maybe there's a couple of those that have some cross sections. Over at the Cape, we know that we're starting to see cross sections and maybe even a second floor going up, or a second floor, a second level, whatever you want to call it. But here, they're still putting some of these verticals in place. Look how thick that is. God. You do not want to get your finger under that when the crayon operator lets it down. We're installing some, uh, were we installing bolts? I guess he didn't put anything on there. Was he measuring it or rimming it out or something? Like preparing it? I'm trying to see exactly what's happening there. Is it like an alignment thing or what? Huh. Oh, this is zoomed in up on the tower crane. It's got like a little Juliet balcony thing. And you can lean out forwards? I didn't actually know that those opened like that. Doesn't make sense if you really need to get a further forward view, but uh... God, that thing, it looks like it should be at a port or something. That is a cool shot of the crane operator. I think you can see his feet. Is that a, is it glass bottom on that? I need to ask somebody to get that angle. I don't know if that was his feet or it just looked that way, but uh... Huh. Some crane parts being delivered here from Bishop Lifting Rentals. Is that Angleton, Texas? Wow! That hoist thing swinging. I guess it's not going anywhere. You'd think it'd be better secured. Like, loads moving like that while they're being transported. Maybe that's got a, a just a boat ton of chain underneath it or something like that, so it's not going to go anywhere. It's just that a, a load that shifts like that, you usually expect it to be a... Uh, secured down from a couple of points of contact so that this this massive uh, mass massive object isn't swinging around while that truck is carrying it down the road I don't know that's how you get into a situation where you know it turns and you turn again and it causes like this little oscillation and then the whole truck flips over maybe that part wasn't enough or maybe the rest of that thing was heavy enough it wasn't a big deal but oh look at this thing that is the ibuprofen getting lifted <laughs> Whoever at SpaceX put that label on it, knowing that we would have to say it over and over again, well played. Th thank you for putting the label on it, and thank you for facing it towards the cameras while it left. You know that we'll catch it, and you know that we'll have to say it in multiple videos. 
You got us. We appreciate it. But uh, positioning it here at pad 2, looks like it's going to connect to some parts of pad 2 and then most likely get a ton of weight or mass added to it to test out some of the load-bearing actualities, I guess is a way to say it. Uh, prove that the parts that have been constructed can bear the load that they are supposed to bear. Got more equipment coming in. A little bit of a close-in shot here. This is... Drawworks? That's the Drawworks leaving Starbase. So are they... Are they re commission I mean, are they going to, like, refurbish it or something? Are they going to replace it? That's an interesting question. We'll have to see what the Starbase update uh, analysts say. Remember, I'm not an analyst. I'm just commentating on what I see, but I don't uh, do a ton of research in advance on these things. That's for the Starbase update crew to do for the Starbase updates on Monday. There's a little bit of a deluge test over there on Pad 2 again. There's a longer Pad 2 test. God, it's tough with no lights. It's just like the ambient work lights in the area. They're sort of lighting that up, so the, a little bit of a tough contrast there on this camera. But, hey, we'd rather show you that it happened, even if we don't have it in 8K, crazy footage, yada, yada, yada. Like, it's really... That wouldn't be realistic to capture everything in uh, super high bit rates or anything, because then you'd miss tons of stuff. Tile pool testing. You got the little tile pool testing tool there, and you grab it, and you try to pull it to make sure that they're properly attached. They're not going to come flying off. I wouldn't even doubt if it has a load cell sort of system on there. So when you pull on it, it shows you how much force you've exerted. It's almost like a, like a reverse torque wrench. really doesn't have anything to do with a torque wrench other than the fact that it's measuring something in a quantitative, empirical way instead of just, you know, tapping it with your thumb and being, yeah, that's good enough. That tile ain't going anywhere. Um, see, if that was me, I'd be scanning a barcode on each tile and uh, jotting down the position showing that it withstood this amount of force or whatever. Maybe that's later in the program when they need to do that. We've got air quotes again. Test Tank 18 scooting back around. Is it going to end up all the way in? Yes, the door will open. And it goes inside. And then finally we're over here with an OLM section being removed. This looks like a chunky interior section. We saw the shielding come off. A lot of y'all pointing out in the video that they cut right through that door. I appreciate the folks coming back and back to multiple videos in a row here. Y'all were right. They cut right through it. But uh, there was a big chunk coming off. So hopefully we continue to see those big chunks come off of pad one and they get that thing the heck out of the way. Don't forget, you want to use another language or you want to try out the ambient, click the little gear because it's a Starbase summary. That's what we do. Get you footage fast so that you can see what's going on at Starbase even if you don't have time to watch it 24-7. Thank y'all for watching and we will see you nerds later.